Unprecedented, Typhoon Haikoe three consecutive landfalls in three different places, leaving citizens in shock. Reported radiation substance leak in Inner Mongolia. High deaths among top CCP officials and police continue to be reported amidst new coronavirus rampage. As soon as school started, chaos broke out frequently, parents and students protest across China. Victims of defaulted real estate companies rally in mass protest. Funds fleeing China, mainland tourists form long queues at Hong Kong banks. Chinese low-cost electric cars invade, European car manufacturers on high alert. It's all covered in today's China Truths. Unprecedented, Typhoon Haikoe three consecutive landfalls in three different places, leaving citizens in shock. On September 5, Typhoon Haikoe officially made landfall in China. However, within just two hours from 5.20 a.m., this typhoon made landfall three times at three different locations, devastating the areas it swept through. This left local residents shocked, with many exclaiming that this had never happened before. In detail, according to the official People's Daily Report on September 5, Haikoe made landfall on the coast of Dongshan County, Fujian Province, at 5.20 a.m. It then made another landfall along the coastal area of Raoping County, Guangdong Province, around 6.45 a.m. At the time of these landfalls, the maximum wind speed near the center reached 8 on the Beaufort scale, 18 meters slash second. Due to the influence of the typhoon, Fuzhou City in Fujian Province experienced an extremely heavy rainfall. In the early hours of the same day, Chuanzhou City in Fujian Province faced a flood disaster, with surging floodwaters inundating the urban area, and the streets turned into waterlogged areas. On the same day, the Shermen Bridge in Fucking, Fujian, was washed away by floodwaters. The Longjiang River in Fuzhou City saw a rapid rise in water levels, turning the riverside areas into waterlogged regions, and a large number of cars were submerged by floodwaters. In Xiamen City, the urban area suffered from severe flooding, with many cars submerged, leaving only their rooftops visible. However, some people have noted that the heavy rainfall in Xiamen is not ending but rather just beginning. In Fuzhou's Minho County, known as the hometown of Chinese goldfish, several towns were hit by disasters. The entire village of Guqing in Nantung Town was submerged, causing significant losses for fish farmers. In the coming days, the coastal areas of Fujian and the central eastern regions of Guangdong are expected to face a severe situation of heavy rainfall. It is anticipated that the total rainfall in Fujian may surpass 600 mm. Notably, according to the Vision Times, the Typhoon Haikoe, originally named Dragon King, was formed on September 26, 2005. At that time, this powerful typhoon caused at least 147 deaths and 39 injuries on mainland China. As a result, there was a request to rename Dragon King to Haikue. This move raised questions among the public, with some suspecting that the authorities were attempting to conceal past events. Whether enthusiasts jokingly remarked, according to the typhoon naming and renaming system, Haikue is essentially the substitute name for the retired Dragon King typhoon, a kind of reincarnation. And this version of Typhoon Haikue does indeed seem to have a bit of Dragon King's temperament. Shanghai Sam's Club flooded during rainstorm. Due to the influence of the outer circulation of Typhoon Haikue, Shanghai experienced heavy rainfall over the past weekend, leading to severe flooding at a Sam's Club located in the Jinru area of Putua, Shanghai. A viral video depicted this rare scene inside the store, with staff working diligently to remove the water. This video garnered attention from netizens. The customer service representative explained that the first instance of flooding occurred because there was no prior plan in place, as the store is located underground. This time, the flooding happened because the flood prevention boards for the safety exits were not properly sealed. This Sam's Club is a high-end membership store under the Fortune 500 company Walmart. The Sam's Club membership store in Putua District is the fifth Sam's Club store to open in Shanghai and the first one in the central urban area of Shanghai. 
It boasts a total area of over 50,000 square meters, including a 9-meter-high underground shopping space. Reported Radiation Substance Leak in Inner Mongolia In regards to the situation where a considerable number of residents in Hohot City, Inner Mongolia, are experiencing asthma symptoms and requiring hospitalization due to coughing, chest tightness, and difficulty breathing, the exact cause remains unclarified. However, recently, very noteworthy information has revealed that a radioactive substance leak has been reported in a coal mine in Ordos, Inner Mongolia. This has resulted in radiation injuries to many people, particularly acute respiratory damage, impacting areas including Ordos, Hohot, Baotou, as well as Datong in Taiyuan and Shangxi province. On the morning of the 4th, a chemical defense unit from Beijing equipped with nuclear-grade gear was dispatched for containment. Online reports suggest that the military transferred an abandoned coal mine to a coal tycoon. After a few days of open pit mining starting on August 20, two drivers involved in mining and transportation suddenly experienced bodywide ulcerations. They were sent to a disease control center but passed away, and it was discovered to be radiation sickness. Mr. Chi, a resident of Ordos, mentioned, We have a lot of open pit coal mining here, and there have been more cases of respiratory illnesses, similar to those symptoms, like feeling sore all over my body. I don't know if it's a cold or something else. Many students at the school are experiencing the same. Information here is tightly controlled and the truth has not been revealed by the government. Ms. Lu from Baotou also revealed that Baotou is very close to Ordos and suffers from severe pollution. The local population has a shorter life expectancy, and there are few people over 65 years old. Reporting or advocating for rights is suppressed, and those who can afford it send their descendants away. Ms. Lu, a resident of Baotou, explained, Our residential area is very close to a nuclear industrial plant, and pollution is severe. The water cannot be consumed anymore. The water we drink is bottled, and it certainly affects our health. There are various cancers like breast cancer, uterine cancer, lung cancer, and so on. It's a vicious cycle, and there is no protection in China. High deaths among top CCP officials and police continue to be reported amidst new coronavirus rampage. The new coronavirus outbreak is on the rise again on the Chinese mainland, resulting in a substantial increase in the number of infections and a concurrent rise in the number of deaths, particularly among members of the Chinese Communist Party CCP. A resident from Guangdong told NTDTV that, I've been seeing reports in the news about a growing number of people testing positive for the virus a third time. I never expected that I would also test positive again, this is now my third time. Dr. Liu Weidong, a physician in the general surgery department at Hebei Children's Hospital, mentioned, Lately, it seems like there's been a rise in people testing positive for the virus a second or third time. This coincides with the start of the school year, where children interact with more people, potentially increasing the risk of infection. On September 5, the Vision Times reported that during the final week of August, mainland China saw the deaths of at least eight more well-known professors and researchers, with five of them being members of the CCP. The report also indicates that nearly a hundred high-ranking officials, professors, and police officers have passed away this year. In a recent report by the paper, it was mentioned that Li Lin, a well-known host of Chongqing radio and television station, tragically passed away from a sudden heart attack while exercising on the evening of September 2, despite still recovering from a cold. This event has sparked widespread discussions, with many netizens expressing doubt about the cause of death reported by Chinese media and suspecting a connection to the new coronavirus. Publicly available information indicates that Li Lin has been working at the Chongqing Radio and Television Group for 20 years. This organization has also faced accusations of persecuting Falun Gong, a peaceful spiritual practice based on the fundamental principles of truthfulness, compassion, and forbearance. In 2017, overseas reports from Mingwei.org, a website dedicated to providing information about the CCP's persecution of Falun Gong practitioners, highlighted that leaders, journalists, editors, program hosts, and heads of internet companies within the Chongqing radio and television system, driven by immediate personal gain, 
repeatedly held meetings to strategize the creation of fabricated falsehoods. These actions aimed to create an unfavorable public opinion environment and intensify the persecution of Falun Gong. For instance, Li Xiaofeng, the party secretary and president of Chongqing Radio and Television Group, actively implemented policies to persecute Falun Gong adherents. Li Xiaofeng has been sentenced to death with a reprieve, and Minghui.org reports that he faced karmic retribution. As soon as school started, chaos broke out frequently, parents and students protest across China. In early September, schools in different parts of China started their new academic year, but there were numerous chaos and irregularities in several schools. This sparked anger among students and parents, leading to protest actions. The most notable incident was the one we reported earlier, with over 5,000 students in the school uprising to oppose the school administration and demand the reinstatement of bi-weekly holidays. They covered the school bulletin board with slogans like Fight to the Death, Give Us Back Our Weekends, but these were concealed by newspapers and other materials. As a result, hundreds of frustrated students gathered near the bulletin board, shouting each time a new poster was added. The students named this protest the September 2nd Uprising. On September 4, in Rongjiang New District, Ganzhou City, Guizhou Province, there was also a viral video showing parents taking to the streets to protest against the central cafeteria's distribution of pre-made meals to all schools in the district. They were concerned about food safety and the delayed delivery of meals to their children. Banners held by parents read Boycott Fast Food Boxed Meals, Restore School Cafeteria Dining. During the protest, clashes occurred between the police and parents, with some parents shouting, Don't hit people. Some protesters were even pinned down by the police. Furthermore, a recent incident of food poisoning at a school in Yunnan province led to anger among parents. In Yunnan province, on August 30, at Sujing No. 2 High School, Yunnan Normal High School, 28 students experienced symptoms such as nausea, vomiting, and abdominal pain after dining in the school cafeteria. However, parents reported that the school did not inform them at the time, and even denied the occurrence of food poisoning. However, after the food poisoning incident became widespread, the Tsujing Education Bureau initiated an investigation on September 1, confirming the occurrence of a campus safety incident. Additionally, there are also videos shared by netizens that are shocking due to the extensive lack of amenities in many middle school dormitories. Even a high school classroom in a county town in Guangxi gives the impression of being a construction site. Here are some video clips as evidence to support the argument above. Netizens have expressed that with the start of the school year, parents are extremely distressed when they see student dormitories like these. Victims of defaulted real estate companies rally in mass protest. In recent times, starting from Evergrande's default in July 2021 to the country garden debt crisis and beyond, a series of protests have erupted in response to debt defaults by property developers and the widespread issue of unfinished construction projects. These protests have shed light on the significant financial challenges currently facing mainland China. On September 4, a group of affected individuals gathered at the Kangqiao Group headquarters in Zhengzhou, where they held signs and staged protests, demanding the return of the money they had invested in Kangqiao Group projects. Video clips circulating on various social media platforms depict dozens of protesters inside the Kangqiao headquarters lobby. They held placards with messages such as Kangqiao fraud, Kangqiao repay, Kangqiao fraud, government should intervene, and expose Songaway, return our hard-earned money. These signs conveyed their grievances and demands as they collectively sought justice. Based on information shared by an online user, Kangqiao Real Estate is a prominent local real estate company in Hunan, with Songaway serving as its chairman. The company has witnessed a significant decline in sales in recent years, plummeting from 25.4 billion yuan in 2020 to 9.1 billion yuan in 2022. Since 2021, Kangqiao Real Estate has been frequently linked to reports of project delays and halts. Similarly, on the same day, in Zhujiang Hangzhou, victims gathered for a sit-in protest at Wanda Plaza Hangyao Property Center, while in Xi'an, Shangxi, under the central building, migrant workers held a banner that read, Return Our Hard-Earned Money, as part of their protest. In Beihai City, 
Guangxi Province, some owners of unfinished buildings went to the city government to seek justice. They demanded to see the secretary and express their desire to secure their homes. Some of these owners wore t-shirts bearing the words Beihai government, please act for the people. During these protests, there were confrontations between some of the property owners and the police. One distressed owner sat on the ground, emotionally pleading with the police, questioning why they weren't pursuing those responsible for cheating them out of their money and why they were targeting the vulnerable. Furthermore, on the same day, September 5, a collective protest took place outside the headquarters of Zhongji Group in Beijing's Chaoyang District. The demonstrators at the scene were highly emotional, repeatedly chanting the name of Liu Yan, chairman of Zhongrong Trust, and demanding his presence to take responsibility, with slogans like Bring out Liu Yan, Bring out Liu Yan. Videos circulated on social media showed that protesters were subjected to violence by a large group of unidentified individuals wearing white attire. Notably, individuals dressed as police officers at the protest scene took a passive stance, merely observing from the sidelines and not intervening to halt the violent acts perpetrated by those in white attire. Regarding these masses of protests across China, Professor Wu Jianzhong, an associate professor at Taipei University of Marine Technology, shared in an interview with Radio Free Asia that there used to be a cattle and sheep logic in Chinese society. Essentially, when someone regularly provided sustenance, the populace would docilely go about their lives, akin to cattle and sheep that were cared for. However, there has been a significant transformation in society lately. Nowadays, whenever there's a hint of turbulence linked to China's economic woes, citizens promptly rise in protest. Mr. Wu also recounted a humorous anecdote circulating within online communities, suggesting that the new trio of major drivers of the Chinese economy is comprised of the National Bureau of Statistics of China, the Propaganda Department, and Xinhua News Agency. This insight hints that the authorities in Beijing appear to be grappling with China's economic challenges without a clear solution. He pointed out that if the economic bubble in China were to burst, it could lead to further disruptions in social stability. Currently, China's expenditures on maintaining stability are already considerable, and these costs are only expected to rise in the future. Funds fleeing China, mainland tourists form long queues at Hong Kong banks. Due to the economic slowdown in mainland China, depreciation of the renminbi, trust investment defaults, and the spreading real estate crisis, more and more mainland Chinese people are finding ways to transfer their funds overseas. They are heading to Hong Kong to purchase insurance or engage in other financial methods to move their capital. According to a report from Court website on September 5th, this week, there have been long queues outside branches of Hong Kong banks. Those waiting in line are tourists from mainland China, who are waiting to open new Hong Kong bank accounts to provide funds for the insurance they are purchasing in Hong Kong. Since insurance companies operating in Hong Kong are prohibited from selling policies within mainland China, mainland residents must go to Hong Kong to purchase insurance policies. After three years of travel restrictions due to the pandemic, the Hong Kong border has reopened, and mainland Chinese tourists are flocking to Hong Kong to buy insurance. Official data confirms this trend. In the first half of the year, premiums from mainland Chinese tourists reached 31.9 billion Hong Kong dollars, approximately 4.1 billion US dollars, far exceeding pre-pandemic levels in 2018 and 2019. This allows mainland residents to transfer funds overseas through Hong Kong insurance policies, offering financial security, a growing concern amid uncertainties in the Chinese Communist Party's economic engine. Quartz's analysis highlights that the Chinese real estate crisis is driving capital overseas, potentially impacting the financial sector. Recently, the failure of China Huarong Asset Management, a majority state-owned financial asset management company in China, to meet obligations raised investor concerns. Additionally, as the Federal Reserve raises interest rates, Hong Kong banks have substantially increased deposit rates since late 2022 exceeding 5% for some one-year HKD or USD fixed-term deposits, typically around 4%. In contrast, mainland China's state-owned banks have lowered rates, with most below 3%. Consequently, more mainland Chinese individuals are drawn to open accounts in Hong Kong.
Chinese low-cost electric cars invade, European car manufacturers on high alert. China's low-cost electric car invasion into the European market has put European car manufacturers on high alert. At this year's Munich Motor Show in Germany, the number of Chinese carmakers has more than doubled compared to two years ago. Companies like BYD and Xpeng from China's electric car and battery industry showcase their products with a focus on low production costs, aiming to capture a share of the European market. According to data from a UK-based automotive consulting firm, during the first half of the previous year, the average price of Chinese electric cars was significantly lower, standing at less than €32,000, approximately US dollars compared to the European average of €56,000, approximately US dollars Additional data from Innovev shows that this year, the market share of Chinese electric vehicle brands in Europe has increased from 6% in the previous year to 8%. Moreover, concerns regarding the cybersecurity of Chinese brands have surfaced, given that electric vehicles can accumulate vast amounts of data. These concerns have drawn the attention of democratic nations. James Patterson, the shadow minister for home affairs in Australia, emphasized, all Chinese technology companies carry a certain level of risk due to the Chinese Communist Party's national intelligence law enacted in 2017. This law mandates that all Chinese companies and individuals cooperate with Chinese intelligence agencies while maintaining strict confidentiality. Meanwhile, automotive expert Paul Merrick added, vehicles are inherently capable of transmitting in-car voice data to remote listeners without user consent, and there's no way for users to terminate such transmissions. Are you suggesting that conversations might be monitored by third parties? This could potentially happen without the vehicle owner's knowledge. Don't forget to leave a comment in the section below to share your opinions on today's topic with us. Make sure to like and subscribe to see more interesting topics from China Truths.